my early years, I've always challenged conventions. And I, as I stand here, I recall numerous moments uh, during my going days where I have also defied societal norms. Is it from when I fearlessly take on to play football as the only girl amongst boys? Or is it when I shared my passion for music as a radio DJ in my university days? Or is it when I copied from any beauty pageant in university days? I also recall several personal firsts of being the first um, as a granddaughter, I've been the first to attend um, prestigious university, um, taking my master's degree. The very first to Jaqua, or been the very first to play basketball professionally. And I remember all of those that it took, it took the power of resilience, determination, and unyielding commitment to be able to, to, be able to break this uh, the barriers and achieve this manifest. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the time, for being here. And I tell you that it gives me great delight and it's with deep humility that I want to share the topic of uh, shattering glass ceilings, the corporate triumph for women in challenging times. What is the meaning of glass ceiling? If you Google the meaning of, uh, if you Google glass, the meaning of glass ceiling, it will tell you that it's a metaphor of visible barrier that prevents people from attaining senior level function. But I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that it's as real as being tangible. It is a form of discrimination that even when women are presented with opportunities, this glass ceiling prevents you from taking it. It's a glass ceiling that is anchored on beliefs that is uh, based on religion, beliefs from ethnicity, belief from um, you know, in your gender that tells you that because you're a woman, you cannot do it. Glass ceiling is a form of discrimination that is very real, that does not even allow you to be exposed to opportunities that would help you to be able to advance your career professionally. When I started my banking career in a, in a banking industry, a male dominated industry, the very first of resumption I resumed in a training school. And in that training school, please help me move some of this. Okay. I need a picture. Okay. And when I training school, there were several men in the class who either were chartered accountant or they were on their way to becoming a chartered accountant. And here I was, I thought I was very smart. But these guys made sure that my voice was never heard. No. Who's helping me to move this? Okay. These guys made sure that my voice was never heard in the class. Because I was not, I didn't even read accounting, and I was resuming work. I was resuming work as an analyst. But after that class, I quickly realized that I was going into a very competitive industry where men dominated, and if I wanted to be successful, I needed to be deliberate about some. I mean, some, uh, uh, um, you know, in my in my career. So. Even when we go back to the office, these young men would quickly finish their work. On the dot of five o'clock, they would close. At first, I used to just go with them. I mean, why would I want to be the only one in the office when everyone was closing for the day? But then I also quickly realized that if I continued this way, I was not going to be successful in my role. And then it took my boss at the time, who saw that I was really making the effort was struggling, who said to me, you know, it would help your career if you go to um, and, and I looked at him and I said, I can. I can. It's demonic. It takes over your life. But I'm grateful to him. He was a man. Now, but before then, I also recall that even in my university days, 
I met a man that I was sharing my learning aspirations with him. And he said to me, what are you chasing? And what is chasing you? I quickly knew that I had to progress my journey and that that was not a place to be for me to be able to actualize my own aspiration. But it was also another man at work who said, why don't you take ICANN? It would help you to be very effective, you know, as in the, um, in the, in the banking industry. Little, I mean, fast forward, that was an advice that helped me to improve the quality of my work and then helped me to begin to find my voice. What I'm trying to say here is that for you to be able to break the glass ceiling, it's important for you to break a solid, uh, to build a solid foundation. And for me, as a first child, my father was very deliberate about my education. He encouraged me to stretch myself. He encouraged me to take part in sport. He would encourage me to take risk. And so transitioning into, the, uh, into my professional life, transitioning into the banking industry that was male-dominated, then it became um, easy for me to be able to um, achieve a lot of um, milestones, even in, uh, in, the, midst of, uh, in the midst of the male-dominated um, industry. Now, the second thing that you need to do to shut out excellence is that you need to set goals and you need to be able to have a vision. I pause here because, you know, no matter the level of exposure, the matter, no matter the level of education, who better can plan? Cut our homes, who keeps everyone on track if it's not the woman? And, you know, women bring these same skills to the workplace. However, there are so many things that stand in the way of actualizing whatever plans you have. You know, those, you, you set goals, you take actionable steps, but there's always something that is in the way. And it can, um, you know, it can be from um, family expectation, some societal, uh, societal barriers that you want to cross, the underestimation, the bias that you're a woman, you cannot do this. The fact that you can, you're not expected to, you, you don't have, you can't stay late at work. You can't get the job done under a lot of pressure. But I also have worked in an organization where the, the, the leadership, the executive leadership of the organization have been deliberate about including women in the war room of how to win in the market. Including women when it's time to expose everyone to opportunities and being deliberate about that. And today, I also want to honor um, my past boss, Herbert Wigwe, who was very deliberate about exposing women, uh, who was very deliberate about focusing on the competence of women, who was very deliberate about creating that environment where the systemic barriers that naturally would face women from advancing professionally were deliberately removed. Networking and uh, mentorship. Networking builds bridges, and networking also can help you break barriers. You know, they say that, Ashaka says that it's lonely at the top. Say that for women, it can be particularly isolating, and women can find it, uh, can struggle um, in helping, in having to be able to. Um, have a voice in a room that is, you know, I mean, that is dominated by the assertive voices of, uh, of men. So it becomes very important that you have a network of support. I have been de very deliberate about um, networking with women of like-minded, networking with women who represent my aspiration. And I dare say that a lot of the milestones that I've achieved have been through the network of support that I've built. And when I talk about network of support, it also means that you have support at home. You have support in the community. You have support, um, you know, you have support in the family. Otherwise, you would not be able to, um, you know, compete or help you to be able to stand or to be positioned for career advancement because of all of those barriers, cultural barriers, family expectations that would hold you back. Mentorship is also very critical. And when to uh, mentorship, especially as we grow in our career, you need to have a, someone who is advocating for you. And so I've had, I've been deliberate about choosing mentors who have 
spoken for me, mentors who would advocate for you. Because at some point in our career, it's no longer about how technically sound you are. It's all about how connected, how connected and how you are able to balance the overall chemistry in the organization. And our mentors can either be within the organization and it can also be outside the organization. So you need to be deliberate about um, seeking mentors. You need to be deliberate about having a network of support in the industry, professional association, that is going to help you to be able to find um, your voice. Now, confidence and assertiveness. In a male-dominated banking industry, dominated um, world, and it can be very intimidating. However, when you find yourself on the table, you have to bring value to the table. It is the value that you bring to the table that is going to give you confidence in your ability. Because at the end of the day, the other men that are standing with you or sitting with you at the table, whether they have value or not, you hear them, their votes are loud. And so you as a woman, you have to be deliberate about the value that you bring to the table. You have to be deliberate about embracing and taking risk. Some of the achievements or the milestones that I've achieved have been because I have embraced and been able to take risk. And that has not been because there have not been failures, but because I have embraced failure as part of my learning process and I've taken the lesson of not going that path as I advance in my uh, as I advance, uh, career. So you have value is the most critical component, the most critical element that you bring to the table that helps you develop confidence in your abilities, that helps you to be assertive, that helps you to uh, be able to uh, engage even when you have this, the, uh, you have uh, voices, male-dominated uh, um, voices in the, in the room. Glass ceilings are meant to be broken. So I just want to say to you guys, ladies and gentlemen, that it's not so much of not uh, planning. It is not so much about not having the intellectual, capability, uh, intellectual capabilities. It is so much about having all of those and being ready when the opportunity presents itself. So I stand here you know, to encourage all of you, having or still growing and still climbing the corporate ladder, that there's still a lot of work that we need to do, that there's still a lot of work that lies ahead, but that every woman who climbs the ladder is not just a personal victory, it's a collective victory for all of us, and one that we must continue to leverage to help each other you know, to climb the ladder. So whether you are a woman who is getting the challenges of the corporate ladder, whether you are an ally you know, to the cause, I want for all of us to live here today challenging ourselves that you are going to uh, you know, support the cause of helping women to advance professionally and looking at people that are around you. How are you also helping them? So can we all challenge ourselves? This is that we want to all continue to facilitate in helping to make sure that women fulfill their potential of shattering the glass ceiling together.